Welcome to the second video tutorial on how to create mobile apps for Android. Okay, it appears like we have our interface done. Now let's go into the programming part. So we go into Java and we are going to import all of our objects that we have on our interface. So we're going to have buttons and the button classes, uh, let's see, need to be imported. So let's do a Alt and Enter. Let's call our first one Let's see, let's go back and look at these. So we had this guy here called button. Uh, we haven't given those IDs, so we need to do that. That's underscore B underscore convert to Rome. To Roman. And the other one let's name as B underscore convert to number. Okay, so now we know the IDs. Let's go import them here. Convert. To Roman and B underscore convert to number. Next let's take a look at our two edit texts. We have edit text number and edit text Roman input. So we'll have edit text is our next item. ET and then finally we have text views. Okay, it looks like an import is needed, so Alt and Enter. Import class. Okay, so we've created six different variables because we have six items on their interface. Now we need to actually define which variable represents which item. So we go through the routine. I'll go through this quickly. Okay, so now we have all of our variables set up so that we have a reference to each of the items that are on our interface. Now let's do the programming. The only programming we're going to do happens on the two button variables. So let's go with the first one that says convert to number. And we're going to set a set on click listener. And we'll create a new click listener. And the next one is going to be the same, but it's convert to Roman. So and so the program fills in these two codes here. So when we click this button, we're going to have to create a function that will convert from a Roman numeral into a regular number. And then down here, we'll do the opposite. So we're going to need to calculate this in a class that we'll create in a minute. So we're going to have to create our own class, our own logic to make this happen. So let's get started with that and then we'll come back here and finish these two uh, options on our click buttons. This is how to create the logic behind it. I'm going to right click here in the section where we're doing Java code. Choose new Java class. And this I'm going to call this um, number converter. Now this is pure Java learning, so if you don't know much about programming yet, this is a great way to learn. We're going to give you an example of a function to convert from and to Roman numerals. We're going to create two functions. So the first function is going to return a string, and it's going to say to Roman. It will accept an integer, and this integer will be the, uh, the number input. And so by the time we're done with all of our logic, we're going to say we're going to return. So we're going to end up returning a string value. I'm going to put a comment in here so that way before we're done, we'll remember to do that. Return a string value of the numeral. We're going to create another function. This one's going to be returning an integer. So I'll do public int and I'm going to call this one to number. The input, though, is we're going to take a string and it's going to be a numeral string. And just like the other one, we're going to return a value. Okay, so that's the design of our, of our class here. 
Now we're going to put a lot of lines in here between the beginning and the end. So let's go through and see what we can come up with some, some logic here. So I'll go pretty fast and you can type along. You'll see the logic and the pattern that I'm creating. Okay, so the first thing you're going to notice is I'm going to check to see if our number input is in the right range. We're going to not work with anything less than zero or anything greater than 10,000. If we get that, we'll just say, I'm sorry, I can't help you, and return that. But we need to create a string value, and this here will become the uh, return value that we'll eventually put at the bottom. So we're going to calculate a string that will be our Roman numeral. And so return value is what we're going to return. Now, how do we calculate that return value? Well, let's start with the case if we have a number that is greater than uh, ten, uh, greater than a thousand. So, so if the number input is greater than or equal to a thousand, we're going to add on the letter M and uh, make it uh, make it a little bit longer string. So the return value is going to have a letter M added to it, and then we're going to subtract something from the number input. So we're going to subtract um, number input minus a thousand. And so this loop will add on a bunch of M's until we run out of a number higher than a, than a thousand. Now we could copy this and let's put the next one down. So now let's change the case. So if we have something less than a thousand we could end up with a 900 and so if we get a 900, we need to do something that looks like uh, CM. So CM stands for 900. And let's subtract 900 off of our list. Okay, I'm going to keep repeating this process because it's going to become a routine. So I'll speed it up now. Okay, so we've reached the end now. You can see that the routine is pretty simple. We start with the largest numbers, add on letters, so we have each case that we can create in a Roman numeral. So the return value should come back as a Roman numeral. Now this here is still not returning anything, so uh, we have an error. If you look on our screen here, we have an error. But I want to test the first case and see if this actually works. So let's put in a return zero for now. We'll come back and fix that later. Now let's go back to our main activity. Okay, so we have our buttons set to an unclick method, and we have four of our variables set here. Looks like I forgot two of them. We have text view items up here, so let's import those as well. So let's put in a TV and number output and reassign those. Okay, so we have our six variables assigned up here, and we have two on-click methods that are ready to go. Okay, so now we have our number converter created, at least for the first part. Let's, uh, let's do some work with it. Let's see if we can make it run. And so we'll start with this button here that says convert to Roman. That's the easier one, at least that's the one we've done first. So we need to convert a number to a numeral. So I'll put the comment here. I'm going to create a new object based on our number converter. I'm going to call it NC. And that object is a new number converter. Now we could do things like this. We could say NC dot, and then we could use to Roman. It accepts an integer input. So if this call were made, it would send back the letter C. So I'm going to create an integer called the number and this will be the input value. And we'll call this one the Roman. And that's going to be a string to send back to the user. Excuse me, did I say string? We better put in the word string then. Well, first of all, let's get the number and let's get it from the user. Where did it come from? Well, it comes from this thing here, this input value. So the uh, this number input ET input is the edit text field that we want to get the value from. So the number is going to come from the ET uh, number. 
Now how do you get that value? Well, let's put a period here and let's see if we can get something from there. Get, is there a get text? There is, there's a get text. Does it work? Not quite, we have an error. It says there are incompatible types. We're trying to get an integer, it says, but it says it's found an editable object, a text editable. So we're, we need to do something else. We need to do dot, and let's see if we can do a, a conversion. I know there's a two, two string. Okay, there's no two integer, but there's a two string. Let's try that. Now let's see the error. It says you're incompatible types. You're trying to tr change a string into an integer. Not quite. Now it'd be really nice if there was just this, if there were a, another one called two int, uh, but it doesn't exist. So it says, can't resolve that. I don't know what two int is. You'd have to go look in the documentation, but there is another way to get a integer from a string. There's a whole library of stuff in the integer area. So let's type an integer and a period and see what might come out of there. There's get integer. I'm looking for conversion from strings to integer. How about this one? Parse int. It accepts a string routine or accepts a string value and it converts it into an integer. So we have a string value. It's this thing right here. So let's let's copy that and put that inside there and see if this works. Let's paste it. And let's put our semicolon on the end. Now all the errors are gone. It says we've converted from one string into another. So that works. Let's delete this line. So now we have a number assigned. Well, how do we get our string assigned? The Roman. The Roman string is going to be equal to, it's going to be equal to our return value from our object. So it's going to come back from nc dot to Roman. Well, we don't want it to send back 100 every time. We want it to send back what comes from the number. So we put an integer in there and we should get the Roman value back. Okay, now how do we send the Roman to the screen? Well, the same idea here. We're going to say the uh, output. So where's our uh, output? It is TV output Roman. That's our next text field. So TV output Roman. And there is an, a set text item and it is just looking for a string. So let's take the Roman value and send that out. So I'll put some more comments in here. So there's some explanations of what we're doing here. Let's see if this works. So I'll run the program. And so we're going to test our program now. So it says enter a number. Let's put in something like, uh, I don't know, 66 and convert to Roman. Now, it looks like we're expecting a number to show up here, but nothing happened. Uh, did our program crash? No, it's still working. Let's hide the keyboard. See down here, we've got a number. It says uh, 66 there, it looks like. So, so I obviously messed up somewhere. I'm going to check here to see if these fields are the right ones. So this one here, if I click on it, it's called the Roman output. That's the correct one. And down here in this field, this is supposed to be the number output. So there's no problem there. Let's go back into our program here. Let's see if I did anything wrong. Notice there's some yellow here that says, hey, you probably messed up. You've already uh, assigned this one here before. So let's uh, reassign it and call it the uh, Roman output. So that way they're now unique. Okay, so this is a good example of troubleshooting. I'm going to rerun the program and see if we get better results. Okay, so now we try it. 66, we convert to Roman, we get the number in the right place this time. So there's a, probably a thousand ways that you can mess up a program, and I've showed you some of them already. <laughs> so here we go. So 66, the conversion seems to work. If we put in a larger number, 668, and we get a whole bunch of letters, and we assume that they're the correct ones, you can check my homework if you like. Okay, for your homework, we're going to have you finish the application. And so the main part is to finish this application in the uh, number converter. How to convert from a string, numeral, and return a integer. So let's go to the internet to give you some help. You don't have to invent the entire routine. So let's search for Java, Roman numeral to integer. So we're going to get some Java code here. And let's go to the very first example on Google search. This is from Stack Overflow on January 31st of 2012. And this person here is doing a routine. And so you can see that they have a, uh, a Roman converter routine going. 
and he gets to the end of his line and he's returning a decimal value. So you might be able to just copy and paste from here or from some of the solutions below. There are 21 answers. And so this is a great homework, uh, very simple way to uh, do your homework is go and borrow somebody else's code. So I'll give you that piece right there to give you some major help on the on the way to go. And so when you're finished, you'll have something that looks like this. I have a convert to Roman. So if I type that in, I get my number. And then also I can go the other way from numbers to uh, or numerals to numbers. And I've used the code that I've taken from Stack Overflow and adapted it here. And I've also assigned this to um, show up in the right text fields on my, my application. So you should get something like this when you're finished here. And uh, good luck in doing your homework. So let's review some things that you should have learned in this lesson. First of all, you would have seen that we included a new class in our program. And so a class has its own separate file in its Android Studio area. The class that we created was called Number Converter. And you can see the declaration on the right side here. It says Public Class Number Converter. Inside the brackets for this class, you can see that we created several methods. The, the methods that we created in this class were to Roman and to Number. And you can see that they each returned a value. So when you use your class in your program, you have to declare its type. So you can see Number Converter NC is our declaration. And so we're creating a new instance of Number Converter. Once we have created a new NC object, then we can start calling the methods. And so for instance here, we created the method to Roman and it is expecting an integer. So it uses the dot notation to call the method. You'll notice that everywhere in Java and in Android Studio, that all objects that you encounter are really Java classes or objects, you might say. So a button, a text view, a menu, an image view, everything on the screen is a pre-programmed Java object with many methods attached to it. In this example, we have et number, which is an example of an edit text object. And some of the methods for edit text include get text and get text direction and get top. And so there's many, many different methods for each of the objects that are pre-programmed for you. And so that's some review from what you should have seen in today's lesson.